After our last tutorial on Web UI and Stable Diffusion, we got a few questions. One of those was, could we use AI to generate a depth map, which we then can use in Houdini, and maybe even combine this with images generated through Stable Diffusion? And yes, we can. As you can see here in my Web UI, I already have this depth plugin installed here, which similar as the other plugins or extensions, as they're called in Web UI, you can install by getting to the extensions, then available loading the list and scrolling down a bit, in this case, leading here to the depth map script, and then just install that and restart Stable Diffusion's web UI. And then we are greeted with this here, this new tab. Also in text to image, for example, or image to image down here, you can also select this depth map script. And what that will do after the generation of your images via Stable Diffusion, it will run those through the depth map generator, which in itself is an AI. And I think it hails back, or most of the models here in this depth map generator hail back to automotive research, where you want a monocular, a monoscopic camera view to be interpreted by a computer as three-dimensional data for example, to drive autonomous cars. So how do we use those? Well, first and foremost, this thing needs an input image. In my case, I'll use one of the abstract portraits of myself that I generated using Stable Diffusion. As for the model, their capabilities vary a bit. And depending on your image's content, you might find one or the other model more suited towards your individual use case. For these abstract paintings, I found the output of dpt underscore large pretty interesting and matching the style of those paintings. So I'll use that one here. Down here, I'll check match input size. So my depth map, or rather the neural network processing my depth map will have the same size, same resolution as my image as its first input layer. Then I want to check boost, which is a technique that generates depth maps of different resolutions and then merges them in order to take advantage of the fact that at different resolutions, our neural nets, which generate those maps are more sensitive to larger or smaller details. I also have the possibility to invert my depth map, should that be needed. In my case, I won't switch that on. I want to make sure combining to one image is unchecked because I'm only interested in my depth map as I already have this input image here. And for me, when I checked show depth map or show heat map, that results in an error in web UI. Chances are it's fixed by now as this thing develops so fast. In my case, I just only want to save the depth map I'll be generating. So those are my settings. Let's just hit generate, bring up my command window here, and we can see this thing is processing. So after that's done, let's open the folder in which I installed Stable Diffusion and let's go to the outputs here. And in this folder, the extras images contains the depth map we just generated. So let's go in here. And in this case, this is my rather interesting depth map. Again, we could try out different models in here. For example, let's try the Midas and the RES 101 too. And then let's head over to Houdini and see their differences. Also, just as a quick note, when you're hitting process or generate for the first time on this depth map script here, Web UI or the extension will download a bunch of checkpoints, which similar to a stable diffusion means that when you're first generating a depth map, you will wait a rather long time until a few hundred megabytes of data have been downloaded. So keep an eye on this command window here and check the status of your whole program. All right, let's finally try Res 101 and then let's head over to Houdini. So in Houdini to turn our image and depth map into this abstract sculpture, I'm gonna start by dropping down a grid in the OBJ node and then diving in here. By default, my grid is pointing up along the Y axis, which I don't want. So let's set this to be X, Y plane. So it's pointing in the Z direction here. Also, I'll just reduce its size to one by one units, space and H to reframe this here. And then let's increase the rows and columns to 768 by 768, my image's resolution, because I'm using the grid here as my image plane. And each of those individual points will represent one image pixel and thus will be displaced by my depth map. And for texturing this, and especially for rendering this later in Karma, I'm gonna need UVs, for which I'll use a UV project mode to generate those. In this case, pointing the wrong way around. So let's just invert them by scaling them along their x-axis by minus one. Next, I'll add an attribute from map, which I'll use to write the color and depth map data onto this grid here. So let's first select the image that we used by clicking here and then going to the image folder where that came from. And in this case, I think it was this one here. Nope, it was not, but this one here. All right, next, we're also gonna load up the depth map by using another attribute from map, this time setting the attribute to export to depth. So this will create a new point attribute called depth and it should be a float just storing grayscale values. So let's check using the information symbol here. And we can see, yes, we have color, depth and UV written onto our geo, perfect. And here I'll point this to our depth map that we just generated, which hides under our extras here. And if I've got this here, Houdini tries to interpret enumerated files as a sequence, which in my case I don't want. So I'll uncheck show sequences as one entry and I'll just go by the last file here. And I think 16 
no 14 was the right one that I generated. Okay, so that's going to be my depth map. How do we use those values in here stored into the depth channel to offset my individual points in here? Well, I know you love VOPs. And although this will be just a single line of VEX, let's do it in VOPs using a point pop, which we'll attach here. And in here in the point pop, what we need is our color, which comes in through this geometry globals here as a CD, but we also need our depth, which we need to import separately using a bind node, which we'll set to be a float, that's fine. And we wanna import depth. And now what we wanna do, we wanna take our points position and along the Z axis, subtract the depth value from that. So what I'll do is first I will convert our position into a float value so that I can access those three coordinates individually. And then to this, I will add a subtract node. And from the Z axis, I want to subtract my depth here and then merge this back into a vector. So float to vector with the first two components going in here straight and the last component from a subtract node. And then let's wire this up to our new point position. And we can see we are outputting something here. Now I wanna be able to dial this offset in a bit more. So what I'll do is in between the depth and the subtract, I will add a ramp node, a ramp parameter that is set to be a spline ramp. And I'll just drop that in here and maybe just move that away a bit. And we can see our depth has gone. So let's just go up one level here. And on our point bob, we can see that we have this ramp here. However, for default, it's set to be all zero. So if we start moving those values around here, we can see the offset is coming back. And in here in the ramp, I can finally tweak very detailed how the this depth value is interpreted. I like to set those individual nodes here to be a B spline so that we can get a bit of a more rounded, more organic shape. Now let's just tweak that in, maybe something like this. Now you can see our visualization of our color is gone and an easy trick of bringing that back would be just to reorder our nodes here, first projecting depth in here and then projecting the color after it. So now we get the color back and we can see it. Also, if I uncheck the lighting like this, I can see I'm getting a bit of info back. Now this is just a plane that's been offset. What if I want to make this solid? First, I'll just procedurally select all those outer edges by dropping down a group node, which I'll set to group edges and call this one, I don't know, maybe sides or outer or whatever. I will uncheck the base group. So nothing is selected here. And if I drag this down, I will check include by edges and then down here, select unshared edges. So now I only selected the outer most edges here of this grid. Then in order to drive the extrusion that will follow to pull down those outer edges and extrude them into a polygon, I need a directional vector for that. And per default, the normal vector is used here. In this case, I want to only extrude along the positive Z axis. So I will have to set a specific direction for our normal just for extrusion. And then we can convert it back to our shading normal that makes sense for shading. So in here, let's use an attribute create and use that to create an attribute called capital N for normal. And the type should be a vector and its value should point only along the Z axis like this. Next, let's extrude those edges using a poly extrude, drop that down and set that up. So it only works on the size group, only extruding the sides. And then I can dial it in a distance and you can see by default this is trying to use the primitive for edge normal however if i set this to a point normal and set it to the existing attribute that we just created with the n you can now see we can extrude this back and as i will put this on a quote unquote wall that means a white plane which will be intersecting i don't have to care about fixing these offset jaggedy edges here i'll just push it into the wall for rendering all right for rendering we also need proper normals on this so after the poly extrude let's override those point normals we set here with proper shading normals using a normal node just at its default settings and then for good measure attach a null which we're going to call out not out but out at this point let's also save this and one last thing i might want to do or i might feel tempted to is this depth map has lots of really jaggedy high frequency detail which i can bring back in shading but in geometry what i sometimes want to do is blur out the depth map a bit so before my point wrangle here i can do that by just using an attribute blur which i'll wire in before our point vault and set it to blur the depth attribute and just uncheck pin border points and then by increasing those blurring iterations i can smooth out this whole thing a bit you can see by checking and unchecking the bypass has flag what that does in our case i think we can live without it just if you want a bit of a smoother depth map that's what i do all right let's talk about rendering this for rendering we're going to go into our solaris context as we're going to render this in karma and in here the first thing i want to do is using a sop import i want to bring in that geometry we just created by pointing the sop path to the out null so that's this one here we can see this really abstract really wonky really weird image of myself and the first thing i want to do is add a material library node in order to create 
and assign a material to this. So let's just quickly do that. Dive into the material library here and just create a Karma Material X node. And let's call this one, I don't know, Sculpture for now. And I'll be working in this one later. For now, let's just go back and set up our material library so that it assigns this material we just created by going down here and checking Assign to Geometry. And I want to assign this to everything that's coming in through this path here, which results in this black material here. Let's not be irritated about that. We will fix it in a second. For now, I also want to generate a grid, which will serve as my backdrop here. So let's merge those both. And also after we created the grid, let's maybe also use a material library, wire that in here, and also set it up to assign any material we create here to any geometry we wire in here. And in the second material library, again, we want to use a common material X node, and let's call this one BG for background. Let's just turn this grid so it sits in our scene maybe a bit like whoops like this 90 degrees and maybe let's push it back a tiny bit so the full relief shows All right next let's add some light by just adding a dome light here and after that let's add a camera at the position where my viewport is aiming at by control clicking on this camera icon here that's automatically locked to my viewport as indicated by those red areas and this lock icon here and next let's drop down comma render settings and the usd render up by just highlighting this and then starting to type karma and then just dropping down those two karma nodes automatically. All right, let's select an HDRI for our dome light. Just drag this down and under texture, you can select one here by pointing it to that image. Or if you just recently used one, select them here or just point it by copy and pasting a path like this. And you can see in the backdrop now, we've got an HDRI in here. All right, let's just briefly start rendering by setting our perspective to karma. And in our karma render settings, we maybe want to make sure that we are using the XPU engine. So let's just check what's going on here. And I think what we need to do is rotate our HDRI a bit. And maybe also let's get rid of this weird visualizers in here for our light and for our ground plane. The ground plane we can disable here. And the light, if we scroll down here, we can disable its visualizer here. Right. In the dome light, uh, one thing I want to do is up the intensity here and then also rotate this whole light. I don't know. You can experiment with that. Rotate that light also in the viewport to your liking until you have the feeling the lighting matches what you'd expect. As for rendering, in our sculptures material in here, when we go in, let's set up our materials here. In this case, I just want to delete these three convenience nodes and instead use a standard surface in here, the material X standard surface that is, gets white in the surface output and you can see my relief, my sculpture now turning all white. We have to tell the shader explicitly that it should use the colors we stored on these points in the CD attribute. One thing to keep in mind is that when exporting and importing into Solaris, standard names such for example as CD get renamed, which is extremely frustrating when you're starting out. And the color CD, color diffuse, by default gets renamed to display color, all lowercase except the C of color. So let's use a USD prim bar reader to load up this attribute. It's a vector RGB color and it's called display color, capital C. And this goes into our base color here and brings back the colors of my painting. Also in here, I want to tweak the specular a bit and maybe decrease the specular in general and increase its roughness a bit so it doesn't look as mirrory or glossy. Let's save this for now and head over to the image editing application of your choice. Me just using this antique Adobe product here, which also didn't scale well with my 4K display here. But ignoring that, I will just load in the image that we used to generate the depth map and also our texture. And in here, I want to apply a filter so you cannot read this. It's just filter other in in our case, I want to apply on high pass and you don't have to do this in Photoshop. It's available in any other image editing application. And this will provide me with the bump map just to add a bit of high frequency of those fine detail into my rendering. Let me just uh, adjust this. Again, display resolution is really not suited for this, but let's just dial it back a bit and hit OK. Let's just save this one as the same name, but maybe let's add high pass to it and maybe save it as a PNG. All right, let's save that and head back into Houdini where we'll load this. So in our shader, let's start typing image and use material X image. And up here, let's select the file we just created. I think that's been hiding here. And last modified, I think it was this here. Looks like it. All right, to turn this into a bump map, and let's just drag this down so we can see a bit more and maybe zoom in a bit. To turn this into a bump map, I might want to search for bump and there is none. Because in material X, what we're going to use is a height to normal to turn this directly into a normal. So this takes in a height value. It's got a scale 
which will dictate how strongly those normals will be influenced by that. I had good experiences with setting this to 0.1 and then it outputs a normal, which we can use in our shader in the normal input. Let's have this converge a bit and maybe bring up this menu here. And in here, what we can do is take a snapshot of our viewport, which is currently rendering. So after we think this has converged enough so that we are able to judge an image, let's hit snap and I'll just deconnect the height to normal so we can see what our rendering looks without this bump map and also take a snapshot here and then double click on this and it'll open up in mplay and you can switch between those two images and see what they do with the difference being quite drastic and i'm really surprised about that so let me check this and i think in our material x image when we load this up we should tell it that it's a linear texture srgb and let's maybe increase the scale a bit to 0.5 and let's rewire this and check again again taking a snapshot and opening this in mplay and now this is behaving more like I expected. So this is without the normal and this is with the normal, just adding a bit of that fine detail in here. And this is how I generate and render those height fields using Automatic 111's web UI in conjunction with SideFX Houdini. I will work on the artwork for this tutorial a bit. I don't really like the output of this one, but through the magic of editing, you already have seen the final artwork. So in the comments, let me know what you think of this workflow, maybe what you think of the artwork. And also don't be shy sharing your artwork you create using one or more of these techniques. And if you want to learn more in general about Houdini, Unreal, Blender, and maybe a bit of AI, or just plainly want to support what we're doing, consider become a patron of ours, as it is through the help of our patrons that we are able to run in Tagma. With a very special thank you going out to Supermassive Games, Jellyfish Pictures, The Mill, Method Studios, Electric Theater, Pia, Pixonic, Random42, Rodeo FX, Side FX, Illusion, Styleframe, and Rafikanadol Studio. Thanks so much for your support. And as always, until next time, it is cheers and goodbye.